The first tree that we went after was this cherry tree that had blown over and was hung up in this large red oak tree. Our strategy in these cases is to cut the hung up tree from its stump and use the bobcat to wrestle it free. So Jim started to clear the area so we had room to work and I got started cutting the tree free. And here Jim is using the bobcat to hold his deadfall so it doesn't turn into a widow maker. With the tree disconnected, Jim starts trying to pop the tree off its stump. After a few tries, that wasn't happening, and then it started to rain. So what do we do when it's raining? Well, we sow a small field of oats. <laughs> the rain kept getting heavier, and the forecast called for it to rain on and off the rest of the day. So we call it a day after only a couple of hours in the woods. Let's try this again, shall we? Off on the side of the first field, we spotted some downed box elder trees. This area was a complete mess of deadfall. Usually we can just brute force our way through with the bobcat, but that didn't work this time. A path needed to be cleared on foot. Jim got in there and started cutting the debris out of the way. And after about 10 minutes of clearing deadfall, we reached the first in the group of logs we were after. They were still a little more deadfall in the way, so Jim tried the bobcat again. Not so much. With all the deadfall cleared out of the way, it was safe for both of us to be in there cutting the logs free. This area was still so tightly packed with undergrowth that it made it difficult to work in there. Most of the saplings in this area are cherry trees. We tried to be as minimally invasive as possible when working, so instead of cutting these cherry trees out of our way, we try to work around them. You can see the blossom in the upper left of the screen is actually a cherry blossom.
Working in these tight spaces also makes it hard to tell what the log is going to do as it is cut, which makes getting your saw stuck a bit more common. With all the logs cut and chained up, we can then pull them out of the woods with the bobcat. And since we're so close to the house, I'll just drive these back now with the bobcat. Right next to where we were working was this large cherry tree that has some pretty extensive storm damage. And just like before, there's a lot of deadfall that needs to be removed before Jim could cut this tree down. Jim's bar isn't long enough to cut all the way through this tree if he just came in from the back, so he's cutting deeply around the tree, making his back cut. He's trying to get the tree to fall directly away from the viewpoint of the camera, into the field. And that's why it's always a good idea to be wearing a hard hat. <laughs> Did you see me almost get bean? I got it. Jim spins the trunk around so it's pointed in the direction that we'll be dragging it from. We know this log is going to be too big for the bobcat to drag back in one piece, so we decide where to cut it. There's a certain art to this. If you cut the log in the right spot, you can remove a curve, which means a greater yield. This log is 18 feet long and curves in the middle of its wound. Cutting the log in the wound is the most ideal in this case. This left a 10 foot log from the top, which includes the crotch, and an 8 foot section from the bottom. And here's how those logs looked. At first, Jim tried taking the top section of the log with the smaller section from the canopy. And that was a little too much, so he dropped the small section and came back for it. Now we can continue on and try to get that cherry tree down that was hung up in the red oak. So here's a better look at how that cherry tree is hung up and actually the red oak has some storm damage too. So in the end here we decided to take both of them down. This is a challenging drop. The red oak tree's base is leaning in one direction and its upper canopy is leaning in the opposite direction. On top of that there's a cherry tree up there which could push it in either direction. 
So as Jeremy is cutting, he's aiming for it to fall away from the camera's view here, but he knows it can pretty much fall in any direction, but probably not towards that cherry tree. As he's cutting, the tree starts to come back and closes up the back cut. It turns out it wants to fall 90 degrees clockwise from where he was aiming, so out come the wedges. With the trees on the ground, we can start bucking them to length. Directly behind Jim you can see a smaller tree that was completely bent over when these trees fell. That's called a spring pole and we need to be very careful when removing these trees so it doesn't spring back up with one of us standing close by. The safest thing to do is to cut the spring pole tree instead of trying to save it. So those were the most exciting areas of the day. Most of the day went a lot more like these next couple of trees. This tree that I'm about to cut down is a cherry tree. It has some storm damage, but the biggest reason it was removed was its base had started to rot. This is referred to as butt rot. If I can drop this tree straight ahead, that would be ideal. There's enough of a clearing so it won't get hung up in the canopy of another tree. Out in the middle of the woods like this is the perfect place to practice your felling technique because you don't have to worry about dropping a tree on someone's house. <laughs> Being able to assess which direction a tree will want to fall and knowing how to get it to go where you want it are skills that come with experience and something that I am still practicing. In this case, this tree is leaning to the right, but looking up I can see the limbs are concentrated in the direction that I want it to go. So in this case, I'm betting that the weight of the limbs will allow it to fall in the direction that I want it.
As Jim pulls the log out of here, and we look back at the stump, we can see that it's mostly all dry rot. In areas of tightly packed trees, it's a lot harder to get a tree to fall all the way to the ground, and the bobcat makes it really easy to free a hung up tree. So that about does it for this day in the woods. If you'd like to learn more about our overall process, check out my first A Day in the Woods video. If you'd like to see what it's like cutting all these logs into lumber, check out my Sawmill Day video. And if you'd like to see me make something, check out the series I did about building this curved coffee table. So thank you as always for watching, I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I showed today, Please feel free to leave me a comment, as always I appreciate those, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking.